Yes, today, uh, Math 111, we're going to talk about Section 8.2, the quadratic formula. And uh, there's a lot of uh, confusion out there regarding the quadratic formula, when, what it does, what it was designed for. We'll talk about all that today. Uh, I think most students have some vague remembrance of what the quadratic formula is. Uh, let's develop uh, what it is and what it's used for. We saw in section 5.9 that we could solve equations of higher degree, and by that I mean higher than 1, by factoring. That's what section 5.9 was all about, solving by solutions by factoring. Well, it turns out similar type equations we can solve also with the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is really more than memorizing some expression minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, etc., etc. Um, it's really quite a powerful tool that says this. If you have an equation of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, in other words, a degree 2 polynomial equation in standard form, then you can actually write down your solutions for x in terms of the coefficients a, b, c. And the formula for these solutions for x is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Right, so that's what the quadratic formula is. That's what it says. And again, it's used to solve equations of degree 2. You can actually write down your solutions in terms of the coefficients a, b, and c. Let me give you an example of how it works. Let me give you an equation of degree 2. I'm going to try to squeeze this all into one screen here. Let's give you a degree 2 polynomial equation. I'm going to ask us to solve this by the quadratic formula. Right. Now, it's already in standard form, namely in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So then I'll write down my coefficients a, b, and c, and I usually take the step to write down each coefficient explicitly before I go on. It helps keep me from making silly mistakes, hopefully. So a is 2, b is minus 5, and c is minus 3. All right, now I'll stuff those quantities respectively into the quadratic formula. So we know that x equals minus b. Be careful of the signs. If b is negative, minus b is going to be positive. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. all that over 2 times a. Oops. 2 times a where a is 2, right? So we're going to get a 2 times 2 is 4 in my denominator. I'll write that in a minute. All right, so if I can successfully simplify this uh, expression, uh, evaluate this expression, I should be able to get my solutions for x pretty easily. So then x equals minus minus 5 is plus 5 plus or minus, and that plus or minus means just that. You've got one or the other option. b squared is twenty minus 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times 2 times minus 3 is plus 24, so I end up with a 49 under that root sign. Please convince yourselves of that. All over 2 times 2 is 4. All right. 
since we all know the square root of 49 is a whole number is 7, right, I can write this down 5 plus or minus 7 over 4. And again, plus or minus means just that. You take the plus or minus option. It will lead me to two solutions for x here. Well, seven pl 5 plus 7 is 12, and 12 over 4 is 3. Or, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, and negative 2 fourths is negative 1 half. So I've got two solutions for x according to my quadratic formula. x is 3, or x is minus 1 half. All right, I'm going to try the same equation. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. I'm going to solve by factoring. down here. Alright, let me rewrite the equation. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Alright, if I attempt to factor this as a product of two binomials, I'll get 2x and x in the first slots, and I think I see 3 and 1. If my outer product is a minus 6x and my inner product is a positive 1x, I do get then get the proper inner and outer sum. Check it. 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x is 5x and the last product is of course minus 3. Alright, so 2x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 using our zero product rule as in section 5.9. I'm going to, on the left branch, subtract 1 from both sides and then divide by 2. And on the right branch, simply add 3 to both sides. So I've got the same two solutions. Whether I use the factoring solution technique or the quadratic formula technique. All right, I'm not going to prove the quadratic formula for you here. It's uh, written up in the book very nicely in the section 8.2 reading. So I'm just going to go on and work some examples of this type using the quadratic formula. So, 2x squared equals minus 4x minus 1. All right, probably in this situation when I'm given this degree 2 equation, I would get it in standard form before I do anything else. In other words, arrange your terms in decreasing degree equal, equaling 0. All right, well, the idea here is now do I factor, so do I solve by factoring? or the quadratic formula. We saw that both techniques work and I suppose that's part of the game. Which technique are you going to pick? And in some cases, in some equations, it may be easier to solve one way or the other. Uh, in some equations, it may make no difference. Um, in this situation, uh, the polynomial is prime. I'll save you the effort. And of course, if you cannot factor a polynomial, then the factoring technique is not going to work. Well, the good news is the quadratic formula always works, uh, whether it factors or not. Uh, the idea here is the quadratic formula sometimes could be, a, 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 you might spend a little more ink, a, a little more effort in solving the equation than you would by factoring, especially if the factoring is a very easy one. So I suppose it's up to you to decide. Uh, in wise strokes, I like to tell students, if you think you have a shot at factoring it, try it. Um, if you're having trouble factoring it, it may be prime, and you may have to go to the quadratic formula in the end anyway. All right, so we know this is prime, or let's assume this is prime. And I'm going to use the quadratic formula Then it's already in standard form with a equals 2 b equals 4, and c equals 1. So I can write down my solutions for x according to the quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared 
minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, be careful, make sure this root sign swallows up this entire discriminant, they call it, b squared minus 4ac. Also, make sure this fraction bar swallows up everything in that upper expression, properly dividing numerator from denominator, right? All right, let's simplify this expression now. So I'll get minus 4 plus or minus. Let's see if I can simplify this radicand. Uh, 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 2 times 1 is 8. So 16 minus 8 is, of course, 8. So the radicand turns into an 8. And uh, I'm going to go on and simplify this expression now. Notice you cannot cancel out the 4s here. Let me warn you of that. Let me hang on a minute. Uh, this is a common error. Uh, students may try to do this, all right, but you cannot do that. You cannot cancel terms of a sum or a difference over a fraction. Or over a fraction bar. Okay? You cannot cancel out the fours in the, this scenario. So beware of that. No. All right, let me go ahead and delete this. All right, what can we do then? Well, let's simplify the radicand, square root of 8. Of course, I can simplify that, and I think I'll see something emerging. Uh, minus 4, plus or minus the square root of 8, as in section 7.3, we know that reduces to 2 times the square root of 2. And now I think I see a common factor of 2 across this fraction bar. If I want to be real formal about it, I'll factor out a 2 from the numerator sum or difference. And I can break down 4 as 2 times 2. Now I've got common factors across this fraction bar, and those I can cancel out. Oop. Right, so those 2's cancel out as indicated. And I'll write down x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. All right, please note this represents two solutions. And this answer is in simplified radical form. All right, in other words, I cannot simplify this root expression any more than I already have. So I suppose if I want to be super formal about it, I'll say x equals minus 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2, or x equals minus 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. Two solutions in simplified radical form for my degree 2 polynomial equation. All right, let's go on to another example. Uh, the book works out a word problem I thought that might be of interest. There are some word problems in the homework assignment, as you'll see. This is example 5 on page 767 in the book. So let's get that out. I'm going to get it out myself and read through the problem statement. Example 5, page 767. It's entitled Shortcuts. And it's got a nice little diagram there for us. Instead of using the hallways, students are wearing a path through a planted quad area to walk 195 feet directly from the classrooms to the cafeteria. If the length of the hallway from the office to the cafeteria is 105 feet longer than the hallway from the office to the classrooms, how much walking are the students saving by taking the shortcut? All right. How are we going to grind this out? Well, the book gives us a nice little diagram. I'll try to put a simpler version here. All right, we've got our classroom here. We've got our office here. We've got our cafeteria here. And the students are wearing out this path from classroom to cafe through the quad. And the author tells us this 
pathway is 195 feet in length. All right, so we want to compare the long way with the short way. The overall distance from class to office to cafe uh, with, uh, in contrast to the path that they're wearing out. All right, so we have to find the lengths of these two paths in the hallway. All right, I think if you stare at the diagram long enough, you can convince yourself this is a right angle, I'm sorry, a right triangle kind of scenario. And the author does tell us that the length of the hallway from the office is 105 feet longer than the hallway from the office to the classrooms. All right, so I'm going to let X be the distance from the classroom to the office. And then this distance from office to cafeteria is 105 feet longer. And from this diagram, from these expressions, I'll be able to generate a degree 2 polynomial equation if I remember the Pythagoras theorem. That in a right triangle, as I'm sure you know, the squares, sum of the squares of the legs, equals the square of the hypotenuse, always. All right, so I can, I can apply that here with x and x plus 105 being the legs of this right triangle. So I'll say x squared plus x plus 105 squared equals the hypotenuse, namely the pathway, the shortcut, 195 squared. All right, from this expression, I'll be able to get things in standard form and then solve this kind of nasty looking equation with the quadratic formula. All right, it's going to require some effort here to get things in standard form. I'm going to have to square x plus 105. If I square that binomial, I get x squared plus 210x plus, well, using my calculator, 11025. That's 105 times 105 is going to be 11025. So clearly a calculator is called for here and 195 squared, if you punch it out, is 38,025. Alright, things are looking a little better. I'm going to combine like terms, simplify as much as I can. If I subtract 38,025 from both sides, I get minus 27,000 on the left and of course zero on the right. Now before I apply the quadratic formula, I'm going to want to get as simple as I can and I notice every uh, each of these coefficients is divisible by 2. So let's divide this equation through by 2 before I start plugging into the quadratic formula. Now certainly these numbers are a little nastier, a little higher in magnitude than we, we might be used to. Well, that's okay because we've got our calculator to help us along. This is a degree two equation that I can solve with the quadratic formula. It may factor, but 13, five has, uh, 13,500 has so many possibilities to it that I'm not even gonna bother to try to factor it. I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula always works whether the equation factors or not. All right, so A is 1, B is 105, and C is negative 13,500. Be careful of those negative signs. So, according to the quadratic formula, X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Alright, looks good. Let's simplify the radicand first before we go on. So we'll get minus 105 plus or minus 105 squared minus, and now be careful of the two negatives here, you got a negative and a negative, and negative, negative is positive. So 105 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 13,500, I get on my calculator 68,025. Okay. 
divided by 2 times 1 is 2. Looks better already. Continuing on, x equals minus 105 plus or minus. Well, if I plug in 68025 and hit my square root operator, uh, sure enough, it's a 26820, I'm sorry, 68025 is a perfect square. And so the square root of that is 255 over 2. All right, so that was nice. So x is then again then going to be, uh, well, I'll take the plus or minus option here. 255 minus 105, that's going to be, um, let me say that again. I'm going to take minus 105 plus 255. Take the plus option first. That'll give me a numerator of 150 over 2. Or taking the minus option, minus 105, um, minus 105 minus 255 is negative 360 over 2. Okay? All right, the worst is over. So x is going to be, well, 150 over 2. That's going to be 75. Or x equals minus 360 over 2 is minus 180. All right, so I've got two solutions for x. I call this an extraneous solution. X is a length here, and we'll make the assumption that you can't have a negative length, so I call this a false root. Some books call this a false root, false solution, extraneous solution. It depends on what book, kind of book you read. Uh, in sum, I'll say my I have only one solution for X here. X equals 75 feet. All right, we're not quite done because the problem asks us how much distance do the students save by taking the shortcut. So we've got one kind of brief step left. The office, let's say the class, to office, to the cafe length. Well, if we go back to our original diagram, the classroom is here. If x is 75 in feet, that x plus 105 is going to be 180 feet here. Remember, the shortcut was 195 feet. All right, so how much distance is saved? Well, that's going to be the sum of 75 and 180. That's going to be 255 minus the 195 distance of the shortcut and it turns out the students save 60 feet each time they use the shortcut. Okay, So that's the final answer. Be sure to fully answer what each problem asks for. Right, there are similar problems like this in the homework assignment, others as well, that involve these word problem type scenarios. Alright, let's talk about Let's see, can I fit this in one screen? Let me get in a fresh screen here. Let's try one from the, well, it's not from the homework list, but it's very similar. I'm going to, this is number 64 on page 771. All right, looks like this. All right, it's a degree two equation, but you've got fractional coefficients on all the terms. All right, we are asked to solve this equation. Well, clearly I'm not going to deal with uh, uh, stuffing fractional values into the quadratic formula. That would just be too cumbersome. I can get rid of these fractions if I multiply both equations by the LCM, the least common multiple of all these den denominators, and of course that's eight. So, I'll get x squared minus 2x equals 4 as an equivalent equation. Because I did the same thing to both sides, I don't change the solution set, I just make the equation statement a little more manageable. Alright, so now transferring it into standard form. Again, subtracting 4 from both sides gives me an equivalent equation, which I can solve. 
and I'll save you the trouble of trying to factor this. This is a prime polynomial, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals minus 2, and c equals minus 4. So x equals. Be careful of the negative signs and double negatives, uh, which sometimes might appear. Minus b, plus or minus, the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay? Alright, let's go ahead and simplify now. x equals 2 plus or minus the square root. Let's see, can I work out this radicand in my head? Minus 2 squared is positive 4 and minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 4, so I end up with 16 plus 4, and I get 20 under that root sign. Divided by denominator is 2 times 1, that's of course 2. Alright, so the radicand turns into a manageable 20, and again, remember, emphasize this again, this is such a common mistake, you can't cancel out the twos. Let me do it in red here. No, you cannot cancel terms of a sum or difference over a fraction bar. All right, so let me dump that and handle it the way we should then. Well, I can't cancel out the twos, but I can certainly simplify the square root of 20. Oops, I forgot to switch back the color. Hang on. Alright. I can certainly simplify the square root of 20 and see where that takes me. So x equals 2 plus or minus. Well, the square root of 20, as we know from section 7.3, is in simplified root form 2 root 5 and now I can clearly see a common factor of 2 across all terms of this fraction if I factor out a 2 from the numerator I'll get this resulting expression and now factors of products I can cancel out over a fraction bar so my final answer is, well, 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Two solutions in simplified radical form. I think you'll find if your equation does not factor, you're going to end up with solutions for x that will be in uh, irreducible root form. All right, I want to do one more word type problem that we'll see in our homework assignment. This one is in the homework list. This one is number 79 on page 772. And let me turn there and read through that problem with you. Please get your books out and turn there now. All right, students might tend to panic on this type of problem, but if you hang with it and read through the problem statement, uh, I don't think they're all that bad. Number 79, Parks. Central Park is one of New York's best-known landmarks. Rectangular in shape, its length is five times its width. When measured in miles, its perimeter numerically exceeds its area by 4.75. Find the dimensions of Central Park if we know that its width is less than one mile. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. Central Park is rectangular in shape. Okay? Alright, so I'll draw it that, that way. I think uh, most of us know that the, uh, the north-south direction is the longest dimension of Central Park, so I'll draw it like that. Its length is five times its width. Alright, well, I'm going to let W be the width. And this length, then I know, is 5 times its width. Alright, so a, a let statement is implied in a diagram here. When measured in miles, its perimeter numerically exceeds its area 
by 4.75. Well, perimeter exceeds its area. Well, what is the perimeter? The perimeter of a rectangle is the sum of all the sides. So if I add up all these sides, of course, I'm going to get 12w, right? The area of this rectangle. Well, we all know that area of a rectangle is length times width. It's 5w times w. Well, that's 5w squared. Now, where am I going to get a degree to equation out of this? Well, if you'll notice, the author says conspicuously the perimeter exceeds area by 4.75. So my perimeter, perimeter exceeds the area. That means it's greater than the area. That means it's the area plus something, right? Perimeter exceeds the area by 4.75. And from this statement, I'll be able to stuff in these expressions for perimeter and area. And I'll get this statement that 12w is then equal to 5w squared plus 4.75. All right, so there's the setup of, whoops, hang on a minute, what happened? There's the setup of a degree 2 equation. And I'm not going to let the decimal value of 4.75 scare me since I've got my calculator to help me along anyway. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is get it in standard form. Well, since I've got two terms on the left and one term, I'm sorry, two terms on the right and one term on the left, I'm going to subtract 12w from both sides. So I'll get this resulting degree 2 equation. I'll call that standard form arranging terms in decreasing degree on the right hand side if that's all right. Alright, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula of course here especially when I've got decimal values and I wanna, I'll want to solve for W here. So W according to the quadratic formula is minus B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And continuing on, w equals minus minus 12 is plus 12 plus or minus square root. Well, if we punch all this out on my calculator, I've already worked this out ahead of time, we get a 49 under that root sign. And that's convenient. Divided by 10. And of course, the square root of 49 is 7. So I've got two solutions for W in this scenario. 12 plus 7 over 10, or 12 minus 7 over 10. Now, 12 plus 7 gives me 19, and 19 over 10 is 1.9, and that's in miles, because those perimeter values are uh, uh, in miles, right? Uh, 12 minus 7 is 5, and 5 over 10 is a half. All right, so I've got two solutions for W, and I can only pick one. Uh, remember that the problem statement told us. Let me read it here. Find the dimensions of Central Park if we know that its width is less than one mile. So in this scenario, we are explicitly told that that's a disallowed or extraneous solution for W. So W is 0.5 miles. Now remember they want us to find the dimensions of Central Park. That means I have to find the length and the width. Well, of course, then if the, the width is a half a mile or 0.5 miles, that means the length is five times that. 5w is going to be 2.5 miles. So your final answer is 0.5 miles by 2.5 miles. And if you've ever been to Central Park, you'll see that uh, that jives with what you might see 
walking around the park. All right, I've done five uh, or so of these examples of applications of the quadratic formula. So we'll call it a day at the 35 minute point, and this concludes section 8.2 quadratic formula.